Hi guys, Kim here on a bright and sunny March morning. And look behind me, the hyacinths are starting to bloom. But this video is about where I was yesterday afternoon. I went on a little road trip to a plant nursery, one of my favorites. Usually every year at this time, I have just finished planting a bunch of new fruit trees, but this is the first year I did not purchase a single new fruit tree. Got over 60 and I felt like, well, that's enough, <laughs> at least for now. But I did feel the itch to find something new and exciting and going to a nursery always gives me ideas. And I think it might give you some ideas too for your gardening. And we're talking easy gardening anyone can do and not expensive either, but just going for some inspiration. And that's what I had on a super windy afternoon yesterday. I guess these hyacinth were worth all the effort and all the allergic reaction that I had. Would you say so, Smokes? Would you say so, Smokey, huh? Yeah, well, you didn't have the allergic reaction. That was me itching to death. Look at that color. And they all came up. Even the ones that I thought looked like they were iffy, they all came up. Some sooner than others, but they're all starting to bloom. So I'm really happy with that. Now let's go see that nursery. Hey guys, so I'm at a nursery here in town. It's actually an hour away from where I live and it's right next to a super busy road and it's super windy and I'm wearing a mask. So I don't know if you can hear me, but I am at the nursery for some inspiration and relaxation. So let's go. Well, I love this water wheel next to this little pond they've created. Don't know where I could find a water wheel though for my place. I guess I could build one. Looks sort of doable. Pond looks pretty good, at least up close. It's got a lot of little greenery growing here on the edges. I've never been really a pond person. I do like the way they've got that bridge set up though. Oh, look over here. They've got some Laura Petalum, which I have at my place. See? Yeah, that looks like the one right in my front yard. There's another one back there. Ooh, I like this plant right here. Look at that lime green blossom coming up. Really pretty. I don't know what it is. My dad would know. And some juniper, some variegated box hedges, some topiary. That's always so creative. I like it, but I'm not inspired to do it. Too much work. <laughs> and then, of course, the Nandina here. I love this fiery Nandina. I'm growing a lot more of it. In fact, I have a brand new one. Looks kind of just like this one, Candida and Compacta, that I need to plant this week. I like how full this is. I would just replace these topiary bushes that are, they're done from juniper hedges. I would replace them with some sort of flowering bush. Like perhaps the um, abelia I just got that I'll show you guys soon. All right, let's get into the nursery. Well, look what we have here. Something I uh, definitely don't need. Olives. <laughs> no. No, don't need any more olives. Oh, I like these. These are some purple leaf Japanese honeysuckle and they get 10 to 15 feet tall climbing vines, which if you supported them with say an arch or a trellis, you could create sort of a hedge. Um, yeah, look, it's scientific name is Lassanera japonica. If you remember those two little plants my dad gifted me with, with the white bell flowers or japonicas, they must be in the same species, family, something like that. I love these uh, leaves that are 
green on the top with maroon veins and the back side, the underside is maroon of the new growth. That's just gorgeous. And the flowers, look at that. Really interesting looking. They look kind of exotic. And these are supposedly really fragrant, being honeysuckles, and they're perennial in zone six to 11. These are about three and a half, four feet tall. I think I'm gonna get one of these. Can't resist something. Well, I was looking at this one. It's called the Golden Flame Honeysuckle. That flower is pretty spectacular. However, instead of $19.99, these are $42.99. So that's a bit much for me. And Actually, even though they're pretty and exotic, it's not really to my taste. However, I found these, which are not fully leafed out yet, but they have an interesting green and gold leaf. And look at the bloom on them. Now that is my style. This is a mandarin honeysuckle, and it is good in zones four to nine. So it can get a lot colder if you're in a cooler region than I am, but it can handle the zone nine where I am. And I just love that color of bloom. And it is only $19.99. So I'm gonna get this one along with the purple leaf one. Oh, I love this fountain. only $640. Good taste, huh? One day I'll probably find one that someone's getting rid of and I'm going to grab it up. I also like this bench, which I could make myself, I believe. Oops. Grab my plants before they blow over. Now here is some forsythia, which grows like crazy around here. I love this bright yellow. And it is, let's see, five to eight. It's, so it really shouldn't be perennial here because we're in zone 9B, but it is, it's everywhere. That's a good example to you that you can't always go by what the tags say. It really depends on your microclimate. I know for a fact that forsythia grows everywhere, including up here in the north from me and right where I am. Again, you just have to know your area and you can often stretch it especially to a zone one higher than yourself. Now going a zone lower, that can be a problem because freeze is more likely to kill your plants than heat. Really like that archway, kind of a 3D effect. That's a good idea actually, do something like that. Maybe not quite so fancy, but I could do something to the same effect. Got some rhubarb here. So some bare root rhubarb. That's tempting. I've never been able to get rhubarb to grow here. I don't know who does. You'd have to have a really shady area. I mean, it loves sun, but it likes coolness. So again, you'd have to have the right microclimate for this. Someday, someday I'm going to figure that out though because I love rhubarb pie or strawberry rhubarb pie. Hmm, nothing can beat that. Look at the cute little rosemary starts. $3.59 each. I could do hundreds of these off of my one mother plant, so I guess I shouldn't buy any, right? <laughs> oregano, more oregano, parsley, and different kind of parsley thyme, another kind of thyme, and tarragon, and lemon balm, cilantro, and mint. Now this is a mint I've never heard of. Apple mint. Well, I got to try it <laughs> to go with all my other mints. Here's some chocolate mint, but I have plenty of that at home. I'll show you that on the next tour. 
Well, that looks like the lettuce mixes I have growing on my back patio and in my little kitchen garden. But I like <laughs> the way they've got them all packed tightly together. Of course, these are just little starts, but it makes me want to plant my lettuce more closely together than I've been doing because it's just so dramatic looking. Also more convenient, but hmm, I'll think about that. It's a good thing my daughter's not here with me because she would definitely want this cute little sheep. And that is exactly what my purple fountain grass looks like right now. So it looks dead once you cut it back in the fall or winter, but in the spring, out of those dead yellow stalks come the new growth. Any frog fans out there? Ooh, look at this gorgeous orange red abutilon. I have an abutilon, but it's yellow. It's a buttery lemon yellow, and, and I love it. But this is really exceptional. What they've done with this? It's a Uriops as a tree. I think I like my Uriops bush better, but that's a really neat idea. Oh, I think I definitely need to get this. Look at those gorgeous colors. And this is an Arisimum Winter Sorbet. And I already have a purple Arisimum that's been doing well now for two years. Very hardy. This one's hardy down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. And it looks super full and healthy. I'm definitely gonna pick this up. So guys, I bought a few plants and I will show them to you in the morning when I finish up this video. And you know, somehow when you're here, you can block out the road noise and just enjoy the plants and the western setting sun over there. And look at this gazebo. A gazebo would be a really nice place to have an outdoor office, reading area, crochet area just relaxing area a little shade but nice and breezy and I just love the, the rustic feel of it definitely something I'm gonna be putting on my project to-do list for the next few years okay bye nursery time to head home and plant all those plants so now I'm going to show you the plants that I ended up bringing home from the nursery yesterday afternoon. So I did end up buying the two climbing vines, the honeysuckles, the purple leaf one with the bloom that will be like so. And the gold and green, interesting variegated leaf, mandarin honeysuckle with that gorgeous yellow orange bloom I'm going to love and again this one's hardy in zone 4 to 9 and the purple leaf Japanese honeysuckle is hardy in zone 6 to 11 so something for most everyone okay what else did I end up getting smoky what else did I end up getting I ended up getting a fennel a fennel why would I do that I have fennel seeds planted Florence fennel because my fennel seeds are barely coming up. And I don't know how they're gonna do. I've never grown fennel. Uh, well, I did grow it once, but it didn't do that well years ago. So I wanna really try hard, and I wanna see if this one that has a, a head start might do a little better. We'll see. And then I did get the apple mint that I was looking at. I'm really excited to try that out in a tea. And the erisimum with those gorgeous blossoms love all those colors the deep maroons and oranges crimsons and I know that plant does well here and then in the bag is a, I went ahead and got that big bare root rhubarb gonna plant that and all of these and I'm really excited 
about the prospect. So it doesn't take much to inspire and uh, excite a gardener, does it? So head off to a nursery yourself. And even if you only buy a couple of little plants um, or find an exceptionally uh, good deal on a larger plant, you will come away with just a new energy for what you're going to do in your own garden. So thanks for joining me today and yesterday on my road trip to the plant nursery. And I hope you got a few neat ideas. I know I sure did, and I can't wait to plant my new plants. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel and you like gardening and simple living projects and ideas, then go ahead and do so now. And remember to hit the notification bell. That way you won't miss any videos when they come out. And I put them out at least once a week. And remember, you can create the gardens and the life that you want. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise.